So now let's talk about the contextualized assessment and decontextualized assessment. So and what is the connection of establishing high quality assessments? So um, contextualized assessment is the focus in contextualized assessment the focus is on the students construction of functioning knowledge it is the students performance in their application of knowledge and skills in the real work context of the discipline area contextualized assessment makes use of performance based tasks which are authentic in nature so they reflect real life like outside of the classroom task and require students to utilize higher order thinking skills and that is what he stated by Kuruthi in 1994 and Leon and Ilyas in 1998 to especially fulfill on demand duties and task so a student may have mastered the rules of subject verb agreement get a perfect score in a multiple choice test on subject verb agreement but when he or she delivers a speech in real life fails to observe subject verb agreement rules so when we say decontextualized assessment on the other hand the contextualized assessment includes written exams which are um, suitable for assessing declarative knowledge and do not necessarily have a direct connection to a real life context by big 2011 and it focuses on declarative knowledge and or procedural knowledge in artificial situations detached from the real world context. So both contextualized and decontextualized learning and assessment have their role in evaluating learning outcomes. And in practice, Biggs and Tang claim in 2011 that decontextualized assessment has been overemphasized compared to the place declarative knowledge has in the curriculum. So both declarative knowledge and real life application of that knowledge must be assessed appropriately. A common mistake is to assess only the lead in declarative knowledge, not the functional knowledge that emerges from it by Biggs and Tang in 2011. So now, we'll talk the establishing high quality assessment. So there are four of it. Four. So number one is quality assessments are in accordance with contemporary view of active learning and motivation. So what does this mean? This means that learners discover and construct meaning, set plan and work to realize their goals, associate and link information with existing knowledge in meaningful ways, think critically and creatively, develop self-monitoring skills, have positive expectations for learning and especially confidence in their skills, and are enthusiastically and internally motivated to learn apply what they learn to real world situations and situations and most importantly communicate effectively so that is what he said by Suntrack 2009 so the message is very clear because high quality assessments involve learners in the assessment process beginning with the setting of goals monitoring of their own learning and in building self-confidence because learners are intrinsically motivated to learn the high quality assessments are not just a meaningless reproduction of knowledge learned but linking information to 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 other bits of information meaningfully while thinking critically and creatively to apply what they learn to real world situations and in short High quality assessments are contextualized 
not decontextualized. So number two is assessment of high quality is valid. So assessment is valid if it measures what it is what it is supposed to measure, how well the learning outcomes have been attained. So a teacher must be through to his or her intended learning outcomes then the idea of the alignment of intended learning outcomes teaching learning activities and assessment is what john biggs in 2003 called constructive alignment which is the essence of outcome-based education so we have assessment of high quality is reliable so assessment is reliable when the test produces consistent scores, if you give a test retest test in math and find out that those who get high scores in the first take also get high scores in the second take of the same test. And those who get low scores in the first take also got low in the retest of the same test. Then the assessment is reliable. If the opposite happens such that those who scored in high in the first take got low scores in the retest and that those who got low in the first take scored high in the retake, then the assessment is not reliable. We have the fourth one. Assessment of high quality is fair. So it is fair if it assesses what it is supposed to be assessed as stated in the learning outcome which is expected to have been thought. This is the principle of constructive alignment in action. And obviously, assessing learners on something they have not been thought is unfair. Assessment is also unfair if it is biased against subgroups of students examples when negative stereotypes of particular subgroups are included in the test an example is when the test item portrays males in high paying and prestigious jobs and females in low paying and less prestigious jobs second example is when assessment unfairly penalizes a student based on the student's ethnicity, socioeconomic status, gender, religion, and disability. For example, when a teacher decides to see how well students can collaboratively solve problems which require students to work together synchronously online, where only affluent students who can afford to have laptops and internet connectivity can participate while students from the lower economic status will be deprived of the collaborative problem solving. So, in general, the contextualized assessment focuses on students' application of knowledge, skills, and values in a, the context of work that is related to specialization while the contextualized assessment is focuses on students' knowledge and skills which are not necessarily connected to work context. And assessment is of high quality when it is in accordance with contemporary view of active learning and motivation. It involves learners in the assessment process beginning with the setting of goals monitoring of their own learning and in building self-confidence because learners are intrinsically motivated to learn. It is not just students' meaningless reproduction of knowledge learned, but linking information to other bits of information meaningfully, critically, and creatively to apply what they learn to real-world situations. It is valid. It assesses what it is supposed and intended to assess. It is reliable, meaning the test produces consistent scores. And it is fair, like when learners are assessed 
on something they were taught and it's not against subgroups of students so Marisha so as what I said as what I said earlier we have the um, for establishing high quality assessments so take note that these are um, the number one that I talked earlier this is the quality assessments are in accordance with contemporary view of active learning and motivation and second we have assessment of high quality is valid the third one we have the assessment of high quality is reliable and the fourth one we have the assessment of high quality is fair so establishing high quality assessment should be valid reliable reliable fair and in accordance with contemporary view of active learning and motivation so i guess that will be all thank you